first person I met when I walked into Multiply Church was this young lady. Uh, I walked in and still think I had the babies in my arm and they have the expo. And Kayla, come on up. She had a booth and she, uh, I think, I guess you already knew Larissa. Uh, yeah, yeah, she already knew Larissa, but anyway, she is just a treat. But she is a uh, missionary to Ecuador. She's just getting started. Uh, we just got back from Ecuador about a month ago. So let her just introduce yourself and tell, you, tell everybody what you got going on. Okay, so like you said, my name's Kayla. Um, I first want to start off with a thank you. Thank you for letting me be here tonight and share. It is truly a privilege to be here um, and to take time and just to share my story. It's not a story that I like to keep to myself. It is a story I do like to share. I like to share with others because of the purpose and the drive that it has. It's a story that is meant to be shared, just as every single one of your stories are meant to be shared, all to glorify God and all to glorify the Lord and his work. So let me introduce myself. My name is Kayla. I am currently a third grade teacher at Corinth Holders Elementary School. It's a super small school in Johnston County. Um, but I am super excited to be here and kind of tell you about what I'm going to be doing. So I am going to be a missionary associate to Ecuador for two years. My goal is to leave in September, um, where I will be heading to language school for eight months, and then I'll be on the field with Ashley Meredith Penley in the northern highlands of Ecuador for 18 months. So before I tell you about what that looks like, and all the amazing things that are to come, I do want to tell you about how I got here. That's usually the first question I get is, well, how did you get to this point? Why are you going? What is the purpose? And I love telling people. So a little bit about my story is when I was 13 years old, I actually had played soccer growing up for 10 years. And in the process of playing, I had fractured my back twice. So at this point, it was an injury that, had, quite frankly, I tried everything I could to fix it. I had tried the therapy, the medicines, the back braces, all of the things, and nothing quite fixed it. Nothing quite helped it. And I ended up in a wheelchair. Um, I was wheelchair bound for about four or five months. I couldn't walk. I was pulled out of school. I was pulled out of all other activities. My parents were a big rock in that time. I grew up in the church, so I knew the Lord. I love missions at this point in my life. I knew that God was doing something in the missions world in my heart. But after going through that, I can tell you very quickly, I became very bitter. I became very angry. I remember I would sit at night and question, well, how could a God that loves me be a God that lets me go through this? But little did I know that what I went through then is the same story that I use now to declare his goodness, to declare his redeeming love, and declare his restoration. And it's a beautiful process, but it's a process that hurts. It's a process that takes time to realize and to cultivate. But little do we know, every single season of struggle, every single season where we're going through something that we don't quite understand, in the end, God's going to use it all for his glory and all for his good. And it may not fit our agenda, and it may not fit our purpose or our plan, but it fits his and the outcome. So fast forward, I was super mad, super angry. Honestly, I could care less to go to church. I would walk in my church building that I grew up in, and I would just have a distaste. I didn't want to be there. And as hard as that is for me to stand here and tell you that now, it's the truth. And I sat like that for about seven years where I didn't really understand. I still knew who the Lord was, but there was no relationship, nor did I care to have one, because again, it's the way I viewed God. When I was about 20, I was in college, living my life, and it wasn't until there was one very distinct week where God took everything that I thought that I knew and everything that I thought that I had planned, and he turned it right on upside down within a week. I'd lost relationships, I'd lost my purpose, my plan, a career path that I was planning within a week, all gone. So at this point, I had faced as a 12-year-old, as a 13-year-old, 14-year-old, 15-year-old, having to go through a physical brokenness, and now at 20, having to go through emotional, spiritual brokenness. So completely feeling broken and lost, not knowing where else to go. I turned to the only thing and the only person that I had ever found any hope in, and that was Jesus. So at 20 years old, 
I start walking down in my relationship, growing my relationship with the Lord, falling back in love with missions, getting back involved as much as possible. And I end up somehow getting to go on a trip to Ecuador. So I go to Ecuador in 2023, in the summer of 2023, where I get to work with the same missionaries that I'm going back to work with. And on this trip, I didn't, honestly, didn't really know I was there. Like, love missions, go on a trip. If you get a chance, go on a short-term trip. They're amazing. They bless the missionaries. They bless the people. But I was like, God, like, I know you're going to move, but I don't know how. Little did I know. I sat over a scripture one morning, or the night before, we had had this amazing revival night, prayer and worship. And I remember, like, this prayer of God, like, I want to be a sacrifice to you. Like, let my life be laid down for you. It's a big prayer. He answered it. The next morning, I was going through my Bible, and I was reading the scripture and happened to come across the scripture of Romans 12.1, where it says, Therefore I urge you, brothers and sisters, in view of God's mercy, to offer your bodies to God. This is, no, to offer your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and pleasing to God. This is your true and proper worship. living sacrifice? How? How am I going to do this? How am I going to live my life as a living sacrifice? If that's what you're calling me to, Lord, I'll do it, but how? To be living means to be alive, and to be a sacrifice means to be laid down. So to quite literally take your life, your plans, your desires, and to lay them down for the Lord so that his will may be done. And I sat there that morning going, God, what do you want? What do you want from me? How can I live my life as a living sacrifice to you? And it was as clear as day. And I can still pinpoint that very moment where God said, Kayla, it's time. It's time for you to go. And it's time for you to take a step out of your comfort zone and to live your life in full-time ministry. And I was like, I came back home and I was like, this is amazing. Lord, all right, I'm ready. Let's go it. Let's do it. I had to slow down a little bit. So I came back home after that trip of the summer in 2023, and I just started pressing in, like, God, I I, I know change is coming. You've promised it. You've declared it. I know it. I believe it. And little by little, doors started opening, and confirmations started coming in left and right, and I got the opportunity to head back to Ecuador for two years as a missionary associate. And let me tell you, when I said yes, it was the easiest yes I've ever said a part of all the struggles, a part of all the walking away from things in life. It was the easiest thing I'd ever said. Why? Because it's what God called me to. It's this promise that he laid on my life, and it's the same promise that he's laying on every single one of your lives. Because little do we know, in Matthew, gotta love Matthew, Matthew 28. It's a famous Great Commission. Matthew 28, 19 through 20. Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you, and surely I am with you always to the very end of the age. This wasn't just a declaration from Jesus, some of his last words. This wasn't just a direction for the missionaries. It wasn't just a direction for the pastors. It was a direction to his very disciples who were going out into all of the world. It is his same direction to me today and to you today. And it may not be going to Ecuador, and that's okay. But he is calling you to go, and he is calling you to be a part of his work and a part of his kingdom. And I don't know what that looks like for you. But what I do know is when we are faithful and obedient with what he has given us, there is blessing in it. And it's not always easy. And it doesn't always look the same that we would think it would look. But what I can tell you is it is the biggest blessing that you will ever step into and you say yes and you are obedient to whatever he is calling. So as I go, there are a multitude of ways. And the beautiful thing about tonight is tonight is saturated in prayer. And it is the very essence that I have to have in order to go. I don't want to go without being prayed up. I don't want to go and be there without being full of prayer and having people behind me that are partnering with me in prayer because I know if I try and do it by my own way, by my own might, and by my own will, it will not work out. But if I have others and other individuals that are saying, hey, I'm praying for you daily, even if it's just a minute, five minutes out of your day to pray for missionaries on the field goes so far. So I ask tonight that you consider 
partnering with me in prayer daily over the field, over my trip and journey getting there, but also over the individuals that we're going to be reaching. Because the individuals that we're going to be ministering to are the Quechua tribe. And this is an unreached people group. We're about 2% of the population have ever heard of who Jesus is. 2%. So we're going into villages, and I'll have a focus on teaching English as a second language, working in their children's ministry, and community outreach. So please partner with me in prayer over those three avenues that I'll be walking into and over the missionaries that are already on the field. I also ask that you consider going yourself. It's not an easy thing to say yes to, but I can tell you it's worthwhile. I didn't tell you where to go. I just said to go. You can go at your work. You can go at your school. You can go to the grocery store. You just have to be obedient and just have to tell your story because he's given you a very specific story with a very specific purpose to meet a very specific person. And it's cultivated just for you but it's all for him to receive the glory and for his kingdom to be expanded. So I cannot begin to thank you enough for letting me be here tonight and just share my story. And it is because of your resources that you are giving, your prayer that you are giving, your tithing, all of the things that you give that funnel back into missions. I can't begin to thank you enough for your generous or just for your generosity. So I challenge you tonight Are you willing to live your life as a living sacrifice? Amen. Just love her boldness and her courage. Um, So do you know any Spanish yet? (laughs) Nope. Working on it. Working on it. She's going to teach it as a second language once she learns it. Yeah, okay. Quick, quick, quick story. I know we've got to go fast, but when we were in uh, Kenya, uh, I was – very, very uh, sleep-deprived, uh, two days, jet lag. And the Swahili word um, for hello is jambo, like jambo, jambo. You hear it on the liking. Anyway, I was so tired after two days. I hadn't slept. I was taking Benadryl. I was still couldn't sleep. And the guards at one of the, coll- at one of the colleges, they had the, the guns, the AR-15s, the whole nine yards. I was so tired. I walked up, and I said, banyo, banyo. <laughs> anyway, that's, so don't do that. <laughs> Actually, I said it with my southern accent, banyo, banyo. Um, so um, we're going to, if you want to make a donation tonight uh, to Kayla, just make it out to the church. You could put in a memo, uh, missions, uh, war room missions, or just put Kayla, Daniel on it. That, you had a barcode up there. Is, is that another way they can yes. give? Okay. If you scan the barcode. It takes you straight to my website, and there's a couple different links with my testimonial video. It has a giving link on there as well, and everything is attached straight to AGWM, which is Assemblies of God World Mission, which is my sending organization. All right. So let's pray for her, and this is you guys are so generous, and we love missions. And, we're, and then, you know, she kind of gave us a little encouragement that we need to be part of the going team. So my wife, Larissa, has already lined up with the Penleys a 2025 uh, trip. Uh, we're working on the details. We've got a year to get that together, but it'll be March of 2025. So start praying about going to Ecuador and being a part of that. So if you guys will stretch your hands toward Kayla, we're going to pray for her and pray for her the finances and pray for her well-being and everything that God will order your steps. So, Lord, we love you today, tonight. We thank you that you've the call of God is real on her. God, you fashioned her. Uh, to be on the mission field before she was ever born. And God, as she testifies today what happened to her at 13, uh, Lord, only, we, only you know your ways, God, but we know that you brought her to this place. So we do partner with her, and we consider it a joy. And so we sow into the Spirit first by just praying over her well-being, mind, body, and spirit. Oh, God, that she will just be healthy. And, and God, as we send her, she'll have the energy and the stamina uh, she'll pick up that, uh, uh, her uh, Spanish will just go to the next level, that she'll become an expert at an expedited pace, oh God. Give her that anointing to learn that language, oh God. Learn the culture. It's, I know she's been there before, but we just pray that she'll acclimate nicely, God. 
And now we're praying that September she will meet the financial goals. Uh, it'll happen before September, God. It'll happen months before. And so we just believe and we sow into her ministry. We sow into the call of God in her life regarding the fundraising, the goals that she has, God. I don't know the exact amount, but you do. And, God, we just pray that the little thermometer in the spirit realm is going to go uh, over 100% soon. So, God, just lay it on the hearts of people to get involved in this way as well. God, it's already done in Jesus' name. God, we take a moment to pray for the Penleys. Um, they're dear friends of ours. We, we have so many missionaries we get the support, but we want to pray for all the missionaries, and we want to pray for the nations. God, I was reading in Psalms uh, chapter 2, it says, I think it's verse 8, he says, you ask, and I'll give you the nations. God, that's a prayer we need to be praying on a regular basis. For the kingdom, God, is advancing, Lord. And she mentioned this unreached people group, oh God. God, we are asking for that unreached people group, God, through the support of missionaries to hear the gospel, some for the very first time. To hear that name, Jesus, and not in a religious context, but in a freedom context, a liberating context, oh God, that, that he called to, you're called to set the captives free. And we've been to those places, oh God. So we just ask you now uh, to send the nations, God, uh, give us the nations. And we just intercede for every country, every missionary. God, we lift up their money, their fundraising, God. We lift up their well-being. God, we know that every little region has different principalities, so we just drive back the forces of darkness. Refresh those on the mission field. Refresh those that bring their whole families, God. Again, the Penleys have their three children, teenage children, on the mission field, and they're all in, but, Lord, they're under so much warfare. Uh, it's just different than what it is here, and, and so we lift them up to you today, and, and we just pray against loneliness and depression depression and discouragement and God we we just thank you for that right now in Jesus name Lord we also pray for Israel God this has been going on for over six months uh this this war with Hamas and all that's going on and 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 just the the whole world is watching but Lord we we know the importance of spiritual alignment God we want, we're, we're, we're preaching on stewardship, uh, you know, and tithing and all these different things spirit that bring you into spiritual alignment. Well, one thing that brings us into alignment with God's blessing is Genesis 12, 3. I will bless those who bless me, and I'll curse those who speak and curse me and he's talking about the nation of Israel so we speak life and we speak blessing God and we're bold in our stance God we love everybody the, the Muslims God it doesn't matter but we bless Israel because they are your chosen people and we pray for peace and we pray for resolution God and and God we just pray that that whatever needs to happen Holy Spirit you'll get into details that's what we pray and, God, we just pray you'll move all across our land. We don't want to be on the brink of war. God, we pray for the peace of Jerusalem. We pray for peace uh, worldwide. We pray for peace in the Middle East, oh, God. And, God, we know that there's warfare, warfare, warfare going on in the heavenlies. God, we just pray tonight you'll hear our prayers and let God arise and his enemies be scattered. Oh, we worship you and we thank you that you are uh, even from this continent, God, you hear our prayers on this Wednesday night. God, we love you today and thank you that we get to partner with the Great Commission all around the world. God, we pray blessings over Cross Assembly and the missionaries they send out. And we pray, God, we will get to a place where we're more of a sending church, God. We, we're very involved, but we just want you to lay it on the hearts of young men and women in our church. To say, I've called you to the nations. I've called you to be a church planter. I called you to, to, to go out and, and follow these assignments, oh God. Thank you for Kayla. Thank you for her example and bless her in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Kayla. Well, guys, we're getting ready to move now into our time of prayer. We have three people that are going to come. Come. And I want you to get in your posture of prayer, whatever that is, if it's sitting there, if it's bowing, if it's walking. But I'm going to let you know who's coming. They're going to come one after another, and then Pastor Troy will come and open up the altars in closing to pray over the needs here tonight. If you're ready to pray, say amen. Amen. Sherry Pickett's going to come now. She's going to pray for students and families. We have tons of students graduating. Uh, we have kids moving into summer. 
and they need our prayers, and families need our prayers. And then after her, Pamela Henry's going to come. She's going to pray for the economy. Everybody say jobs. We need jobs. And I know she's a fiery prayer person. She's going to pray some jobs in, and she's going to pray for our government that needs prayer right now. Elections coming up. Um, and then Lisa's going to come and pray over addictions and anxiety. And then we'll open up the altar. So Sherry, if you'd come, she's going to lead us. And I want you to not be a spectator tonight. Join your heart with hers. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Will you stand with me? <laughs> Thank you, family. I, I really love you guys. Thank you so much. Holy Spirit, I just yield myself to you, and I ask that you will help me as I pray tonight. Father God, for students and families. Father God, in the name of Jesus, you know what's going on in our nation concerning our college students. Father God, we just lift them up before you in the mighty name of Jesus. We ask, Father God, that you would open our eyes so that they would see the truth, Father God, in the name of Jesus. Father God, we ask that you protect all those, Father God, who, Father God, because of whatever platform, we know it's the enemy, God. But we ask, Father God, that you would protect them from the evil one in the name of Jesus. And Father God, every confession out of their mouth that was contrary to the word of God. Father God, we pray on our behalf, Father God, that they will repent in the name of Jesus. Father, we just give you all the glory and all the praise because we know, Father God, that you are the God of hope and of love, Father God, in the mighty name of Jesus and peace. Father God, we thank you and praise you, Father God, for creating us in your likeness and your image. We thank you, Father God, for giving us the authority to call those things that be not as though they were. In the mighty name of Jesus, we call every college student, Father God, who especially came from a home, Father God, that loves you and honors you. Father God, we ask that you will find them, just like Kayla said, Father God. Father God, I just thank you and praise you for her story, Father God. I could see our young men and women in her, Father God. Father God, you know what they're faced with, Father God. Some of them are battling, Father God, injuries, Father God, or think, broken homes, Father God. Just brokenness, God. We just ask that you would be with them. Show yourself strong on our behalf. Father, in the name of Jesus, we just thank you and praise you because you are the God who can create. So, Father God, we just ask you for a new thing. Father God, in the name of Jesus, in our youth, God, do what only you can do, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Jesus. Lord, we lift up those who are graduating, Father God, as they transition, God to go off to college, Father God. May they not forget who you are, Father God. May they walk and be the light that you call them to be in the mighty name of Jesus. Father God, we lift up, Father God, our school systems, Father God, our administrators, the staff. This is Teacher Appreciation Week, Father God. Let them know how much they are appreciated for raising our children. Father God, we just thank you and praise you, Father God, for it. We lift up once again the graduates, college graduates, high school graduates, God. Students, we ask that you would protect them. Thank you for the spirit of protection, God. Father God, let them make right decisions. We lift up those who are in Christian schools, those who are homeschooled in the name of Jesus as they also are transitioning, Father God. Father God, we just ask you to be with them in their struggles, God. Father God, we thank you and praise you. We ask that you bless the families, Father God, that are sending the children off. Father God, bless them spiritually, socially, emotionally, and financially, Father God, as they release their young ones into the world, God. In Jesus' name, 
we thank you, Lord. We thank you and we praise you that you are God who loves your people, God. You sent your son, Jesus. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. I wanted to read a scripture. Okay, thank you, Lord. And it's Mark eleven twenty three. says, have faith in God. Truly I say to you, whatsoever, whosoever says to this mountain, and Father God, we're speaking to the mountain of the ones that the students are going to be facing as they go off to the college campuses, Father God, and out into the world, the workforce, Father God, those graduating from high school, be taken up and thrown into the sea and does not doubt in his heart. Father God, we bind the spirit of doubt, lack of faith, and unbelief in you. In Jesus' name, we bind that spirit that would try to blind our young people, but believes that what he says will come to pass. Father God, you said if we raise our children up, hallelujah, in the way they're supposed to be, that you, Father God, would bring them home again in the name of Jesus. So, Father, we trust you in your word. We thank you, Lord, that you said that you would save us in our household and our children, God. Father God, we thank you. Therefore, I tell you whatsoever you ask. So, Father God, we're asking. You said that there is power in our tongue, life and death. Father God, we asked in prayer and we believe, Father God, because you, Father God, have dealt to every man a measure of faith. Father God, so we believe, believe that you have received it, and we believe that we have our children home, safe, and believers, God. We send them out, and it will be yours. And whatever, whenever you say stand, praying, forgive, Father God, we ask for forgiveness on our behalf in the mighty name of Jesus. If you have anything against anyone, so that your Father, who also is in heaven, may forgive you of your trespasses. Father God, we just thank you and praise you for your word. And we give you all the glory and all the honor and all the praise. In Jesus' name. Lord, Father, um, we're praying for the government and the economy. Um, in Romans chapter 13, verse 1, it says, Let every person be subject to the governing authorities, for there's no authority except from God. And those that exist have been instituted by God. What a comforting verse, right? That our God is greater than what we see. He's greater than what we, we, um, we can't outdo him. He's got us. So let's just pray. Father, Lord, I just thank you, God. I thank you that you are in control, Lord Father, that no matter what the news outlets say, no matter what's going on, the chaos that we hear, God, God, I know that you are still the creator of heaven and earth, the one that sits on your mighty throne, God. And there is nothing hidden from you. There is nothing that surprises you. There is nothing that we can do to get away from you, God. And Father, Lord, your word says that if my people will humble themselves and pray and seek your face, God, that you would heal, hear from heaven and forgive our sins and that you will heal our land, God. And we humble ourselves before you. God, we humble ourselves and forgive us. Forgive us if we've been prideful, if we've been a prideful nation, if we've thought ourselves too highly, Father Lord. Forgive us if we've been arrogant or greedy, God. Forgive us, Lord Father, if we haven't been generous, if we haven't done what you called us to do as a great nation, Father Lord. And God, I pray that you just, Father Lord, tonight give us a humble heart. 
that when we talk to people, when these topics come up, God, we come to them in a spirit of humility, in a spirit of love and compassion, Lord Father, not of anger or hatred, God, but fully humble, knowing that you're in control, knowing that you've got this, knowing that, Father, Lord, even the evildoers all throughout the Bible you used, Father, for your purpose, to bring glory and honor to your name, Lord, Father. God, I thank you. God, I thank you because I know that you're going to do exceedingly, abundantly more than we can ask or think in our government, Lord, Father. Create in us, in us a clean heart and renew a right spirit within us, Lord, Father, as we talk to others, as we go to the voting polls, I just ask that there be peace. Father, Lord, when we go to vote, Lord, Father, may your love abound for everyone there, Lord. God, give us words and open our mouths when we need to open it and close our mouths when we need to close it, God. And God, we pray that within our financial leadership of this country that you will raise up men like Joseph who are anointed and are visionaries and administer the finances of this country well, God. God, if there's anything displeasing to you, Lord Father, right now, we declare it has no power or authority over this country, Father Lord, over our city, the finances of our city, Father Lord. God, we pray, Father Lord, that you forgive us for living beyond our means, for not giving you our first fruits or for not being generous as you have called us to be, Lord Father. May we be a blessing to our community. May we, uh, we have a heart of generosity and compassion, God. Give us wisdom to handle our finances well, Father Lord, to budget every single penny that comes into our hands, Father Lord. I bind every generational curse of poverty and oppression, Father Lord, and I declare freedom in the name of Jesus. We declare, Lord Father, that you bring jobs to the areas. I speak life to downtown Rocky Mount right now in the name of Jesus. All those empty buildings, Father Lord, all those torn down homes, Lord Father, all those boarded up homes right now in the name of Jesus. No weapon formed against us shall prosper, Lord Father. I declare that you bring businesses that honor you, Father Lord, businesses that push us forward, Lord Father. God, even within our own ministry, Father Lord, I know there are people with gifts and talents that are scared to go out, Father. But Father Lord, right now I declare that we have no spirit of fear, Lord Father. And we are, bound, we are courageous and we step out in faith, knowing that you've given us a vision, Lord Father, for this for this community, God, to be a blessing to others. I thank you. I thank you for the life that flows in this church, God. And I pray, Father Lord, that even within our own house here at Rise Church, God, I speak blessings. I speak blessing over each one of these families, Father Lord, over our finances in the church, God, that every dollar that comes in, it will be used for your glory and your honor, Lord Father. I thank you, Father. And right now, I pray for all those that are unemployed. God, open the doors. Open the doors, Father, Lord, and close the ones that need to be closed, God. That during this time of unemployment, may they draw closer to you, trusting and knowing that you turn all things for the good for those that love you, God. And you've got them in this season, in, a, in the dry season, Father, Lord. May they draw closer to you, Father Lord. May they trust you. May they have faith like never before, knowing that you will provide. I thank you, God. I thank you for what you're going to do in our country, in our state, in our city. In the name of Jesus, amen. Amen. Can you praise the Lord for that? Come on, praise the Lord. We're seeing it. Can you see it with the eye of faith, what God's doing? Oh, God, we just thank you for the opportunity to be able to come and pray because it is one of the things that he encourages us to do without ceasing to pray. And I'm so thankful for the prayers that went forth this week. And I believe that in the supernatural, that those prayers, that they have been activated in the supernatural. 
I believe in the name of Jesus that we are going to see breakthroughs in our city. I believe in the name of Jesus that we're going to see breakthroughs in our families. Who agrees with me? I believe in the name of Jesus that we're going to see healings in the name of Jesus. Do you see it? You got to see it. You got to see it. Because we're called to be on our knees. We're called to not just give lip service. We're called to worship the King of kings and the Lord of lords, to usher in his holiness, to ask for him to forgive us as we have tonight, to ask him to change and to break through the third dimension from the fourth dimension into the hearts and the lives of people that we have an opportunity to be able to encourage, to affect, to minister to, to pray for. Us coming together tonight is a divine assignment. Every person that is here is a divine assignment for us to come together in unity, asking the Holy Spirit to move and have his way. So God, we ask tonight as we pray over addictions, as we pray over anxiety, God, first we just come before you and we worship you as we have tonight. God, we have declared from the mountaintops and to the streets that God, that you are God, that we will seek you, that we will serve you, God. We desire to be that holy people that walk blameless before you. God, we desire to be separate from the world, to live in your kingdom, in your economy, under your word, with your authority. God, to be able to do what Jesus said, even greater things than he did, and he did some pretty amazing things. God, I want to be able to see those that are lame be raised up. God, I want to see healings manifest right in front of our faces on a regular basis. God, I want to see people delivered from addictions and all kinds of trauma right now in the name of Jesus. I believe that it can happen right now through the power of the Holy Spirit. Thank God that anybody in this space right now, anybody on live stream, God, anybody that is hearing this right now, that they can be set free from the addictions of the enemy, of their flesh right now. All they have to do is cry out and say, God, Jesus, help me right now. I don't want to live this way any longer. I need you just like the woman who pressed in and she reached him. And when she did, healing came. Healing came in the name of Jesus. So God, we take authority over whatever caused the addiction. We go to the root of it right now because by your word, it says that we wrestle not with flesh and blood, but with every principality, with everything that is demonic, everything that has set itself up against you and I, everything that the enemy has a plot, plan, and scheme to destroy my life or your life, we call it void right now in the name of Jesus. And we command the enemy to take his hands off, to take his hands off of our lives, off of our children, off of our spouses and our homes right now in the name of Jesus and we plead the blood of Jesus Christ over each and every one of them. Oh God we ask that you would arrest our hearts and our spirits. God if we are causing the sin, if we are in rebellion, God bring conviction bring conviction to our hearts that draw us to repentance as we reach the hem of your garment and we claim that healing, that we claim that deliverance, that no generational curse will continue in the name of Jesus. No alcohol, no drugs, no pornography, no gambling, no obsession with food or image, no cursing of oneself. You are created in the image of God Almighty and you are precious. You are highly favored, and you are his son or his daughter. 
And he loves you more than anything you could ever think or imagine. And he has such a plan and a purpose for your life. So we come against the lies of the enemy that would come against your mind, that would cause you to have depression, that would cause you to have hopelessness, loneliness, suicide. We come against it and we break it in the name of Jesus Christ. And we plead the blood of Jesus over the mind of all of your people. Father, we ask that you would just, wherever fear is, God, we tear it down. We tear it down in the name of Jesus and we speak faith. We speak hope, we speak life, and we speak healing in the name of Jesus Christ. Oh, Father, we receive your life. We receive your healing. We receive what is needed and necessary. May every person in here tonight be encouraged. May a fresh wind of the Holy Spirit blow through this place. I pray that it would blow through the TV, the radio, like a mighty rushing wind, but yet in a still, small, quiet voice that we know that it is the Holy Spirit. God, settle the hearts and minds of your people that are anxious about so many things. God, if we are fixed on you, the one who gives us life and purpose, blessing and hope, even in the middle of our trials, our tests, and even persecution, that God, that we are so sure-footed that we will not waver or doubt because we have faith in you, the one who is in total control. So there is no reason for me to have fear or worry or anxiety or start thinking about tomorrow or planning this that God that we are so focused on you in the name of Jesus that God that we even get to a place where we say God what happens next what do I do after prayer meeting tonight God what do I do Do I just encourage my children and tuck them in and encourage them and have a prayer with them? What do I do next? Because I so love you and want to obey you. That that's how our heart and our attitudes are. Because we just love you so much. And because you are the third person in the Trinity and you're right there with us. You're walking everywhere that we go. So, Father, I thank you. I thank you for your word. Your word that tells me that nothing is impossible with you. That, God, that you, O Lord, are sovereign. And you are the one who made heaven and earth. And that it is by your great power and your outstretched hand that nothing, that nothing is too hard for you according to Jeremiah. Amen. 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 Let's praise the Lord. Come on. Amen. Hallelujah. So I thank you. So I believe it's Pastor Troy. uh, Troy. Yes. Hallelujah. You guys can stand to your feet. The worship team can come on up. And uh, those that led in prayer, I want to invite you to come down and just Line up across the front if you would. You know, I was thinking about the story in Acts when uh, Peter and John were going to the temple and it said, I think it was at the ninth hour, that the lame man that was lame from birth, uh, he was asking for alms, he was asking for money. You know, he apparently had a problem so long and, and an issue that he had kind of got to the point where he wasn't even asking for that. He was asking for something else. So I, I don't know what your need is tonight. It may be something that you've been asking for for so long. Maybe you've just kind of given in. Well, maybe God doesn't have that for me. So maybe you've been asking for something else. But I think, I think, I think there's a scripture that says God can do exceedingly, abundantly, above all that you could ask or think. So no matter what your need is tonight, no matter how small or how big, it doesn't matter how many times you've asked. He said, keep asking, keep knocking. Keep seeking, and you'll find me. So as we go into this song, if you have a prayer, if you have need a prayer,
If you need prayer for anything, come down. Let us pray. Tonight could be your night. He loves you with an everlasting love. So as we begin to sing, God, we just praise you tonight. We just thank you, God, that you are creator, that you are Jehovah, that you are healer, that you are redeemer, that you are a savior. God, that you are a way maker. You are strong and you are mighty. You are large and in charge tonight. And God, we just declare that your word is yes and amen. So Lord, as we begin to worship in this last song, I pray that as people come down, God, that you would just exceed every expectation, that you would just do more than what they could ever ask or think, that you would get the glory for. God, we don't, we don't have silver and gold, we don't have, but Father, what we do have, we give, and that's the name of Jesus. In Jesus' name, so come on down if you need prayer.